Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to Middleton High School. We are excited to host you for the next hour and, uh, and kind of just get you acclimated to Middleton High School. I know we have some parents who, this is old hat, and we have parents that are at, uh, brand new to this world of uh, high school. So a uh, couple of things I want to do is, first of all, introduce myself. And I don't go around looking like this, but this is me, um, whoopsie. This is me on the first day of school with freshmen last year. And um, it was what will happen when your students come for freshman orientation is on that first day, first of all, they own the building in the sense that um, they are the only students in the building. And we love doing that for our students because they get to really work out some of the kinks um, and that takes a little pressure off. But a little bit about myself, this is my sixth year here at Middleton High School and I've been in public education for over 40 years. And so I know kids, I know ninth graders, and I know um, what ninth graders need in, in terms of social emotional, in terms of academic, um, all the things. And I have an amazing team that I get to work with every day that also knows kids. So we design our, our ninth grade programming around our ninth graders as we sort of scaffold and gradually release them into being a full, a really full high schooler. Um, so our goal really tonight is to leave, have you leave comfortable. Um, maybe not everything answered or maybe not all of your anxieties, but at least you're going to know who you can go to um, you can be assured that this is a place that your student can thrive. We know from research that ninth grade, from eighth to ninth grade, is one of the biggest transitions in the K-12 journey that students have. And so we want to get it right for you and for your child. Um, so we are the largest high school in the state of Wisconsin. And that comes with wonderful things, and that comes with things that we have to think through more carefully. So the wonderful things are, you will not believe as they sort of go up grade levels, all of the opportunities and coursework that they have, that really they uh, work that, that they are passionate about, work that they might love someday to do as a profession. We have a lot in our high school. And sometimes um, it can feel too big. And so we've done some intentional things that you'll hear about tonight to try to take a really, really large high school and to um, make it smaller. And we've done that on purpose, knowing how big of a transition this is. You may know that Middleton High School um, has a lot of accolades. We generally are always the number one school in Dake County. We are generally in the top five or top 10 in the, in the state of Wisconsin. But we don't measure our success solely on academic assessments through ACT and so on. That is not the way that we totally measure our success. We measure in how our students feel about being here. Do they feel like they belong here? Do they feel like they have a trusted adult to go to? And so those are also metrics that we measure and we take very seriously as we program at Middleton High School. So um, I uh, am a, I'm a mother of two, a grandmother of two, and, um, and I love being a high school principal. And I love it 
because I get to see this evolution of students, of, of young adults, as they move into adulthood. It is the greatest honor and pleasure um, for me personally to be able to be a part of that. So I want to review a little bit about the, um, the evening, um, the agenda. Um, first of all, we will talk with you a little bit about um, uh, the uh, introductions that we have um, and people that I brought with um, that will also support you. We'll talk about what support your students might need, what support we give our families, how high school works. Um, we um, will uh, have the opportunity later um, this evening to hear from students and also about our school-wide goal. So I have introductions to make, and these people will stand and they all will talk with you later. I think it's important that you hear all of these voices of the huge team that makes up the Middleton High School administrative team. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Jill Gertner. And Jill is um, our um, Clark Street principal, um, which is our charter school, a project-based charter school, as well as an assistant principal here. Um, each of our assistant principals is responsible for departments. And, and if you ever have like an issue with a, a teacher that you're really struggling with or something that's being unresolved, you would, the first, after going to the teacher and it not being resolved, you would then go to the associate principal who will help you to you know, get, um, meet the needs of your student and, and your needs. So um, we are pretty excited. Uh, each fall, we develop courses that then go into the following year in the course handbook. And this next year, we, our students will have an opportunity to take a class at Clark Street, a, uh, a seminar, which is a project-based seminar that they will have the opportunity and it's any grade level that can actually take a course and get high school credit at Clark Street. One of the ways that they deliver consistently instruction is through a project base lens and so we are excited to be able to offer that um, to all of our students. All right, I'd also like to introduce Ms. Carmen Classy, and Ms. Classy has a number of uh, departments. She is the English um, depart uh, instructional, excuse me, associate principal, as well as fine arts, world language. She supports our bilingual resource departments, and she's part of our Phoenix Support Center. If that's all Greek to you, she'll explain what that means um, shortly. And then we have uh, Liz Merrick, and Liz um, is responsible for the Special Education and Student Services Department, and so that's, um, that's the work that she leads. Um, Mr. Uh, Bobby Reinhardt um, is also a, he is um, in charge of the Math Department, the FIAD, Dep FIAD and Health Departments. He's part of Antares. And so, um, and then finally, Mr. Ray Rosing, uh, he is part of our CTE department and our social studies department. So each of these associate principals supervise the teachers in these departments and are a part of curricular design efforts and that sort of thing that supports the work of our teachers. Um, I would also say that they are parents and so I know I work very closely with them and they process things through that lens. Um, I think our whole team will do that, process through a sort of a, a parent lens um, in terms of working with our students. So um, at this time, I'm going to invite our uh, associate principals up to explain their, this is one of those examples of a how to take a large school and to make it a small school. So. All right, again, my name is Bobby Reinhardt. I am one of the associate principals here at the high school. And as Peg mentioned, 
um, as she was introducing us, um, she mentioned the three student support centers that we have. You can see on the screen that we have um, and Terry's, Capella, and Phoenix. And each of these support centers are where we have our student services members who are there um, to support students in, in a variety of different ways. And those support centers include deans of students, uh, counselors, social workers, psychologists, um, and we're all working together to best meet the needs of the students in those support centers. Um, the support centers are all named after a constellation. Um, and we did that intentionally because of the meaning behind the constellations. Um, so Antares uh, marks the heart of the constellation Scorpius. Um, and in many cultures, it, it means that um, we're doing the heart work. And we believe that here at the, at the high school, we, we are doing heart work. And before we can get to working with the child's brain, we have to get to their heart and make sure that they belong here um, and they have a sense of belonging. So we work hard on that in our support centers um, as we help navigate the students through freshman through senior year. So that's a little bit about Terry's. Good evening, I am Ray Rosing. Uh, again, I work with the Capella Student Center. Um, so a wonderful group of um, student services members who are here to support you and your students. Um, Capella, again, is a constellation, but from, um, from the naked eye, it looks like just one star, but really it's a group of stars that can be seen from both the northern and some southern hemispheres, so it's important to many different cultures and groups. Um, but for us in the northern hemisphere, it's visible in the evening, uh, which is kind of a nice little message uh, on those cold winter nights. Um, it means many things to many people, including a horn of plenty, a heart of ancient deities, and a compass for people who are on journeys. And so we believe in Capella that that kind of speaks to the different things we try to do for students, helping them find resources, find their way, um, and find their kind of heart in this work. Hi, everybody. I am Carmen Classy. I'm the associate principal uh, for the Phoenix Support Center. So Phoenix, also a constellation uh, in the southern sky, named after the mythical bird that has a positive meaning across various cultures. It represents rebirth, resilience, renewal, and strength, which are all things that we hope our MHS students embody in school and as they go on to whatever they do next. So the Phoenix Support Center is located on the north side of the building on the second floor on the top of the north social stairs. Um, likely you'll see us out and about, and I know it's really awkward to ask for help, but we really like helping you. Um, so on the first few days or weeks or whatever you need, please ask us. It actually makes our day when we get to meet you um, and, and help support you in what you need. So a couple more things about me. Um, primero, soy una persona que habla español, si es algo que lo necesitan. Um, and the second thing is, I really like corny jokes, so please stop by me when you see me and, and tell me the jokes you have, um, and I have one for you. So, um, what happens when you touch a phoenix? You get bird degree burns. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> so, we are so excited to have you all here and, and can't wait to meet you. Uh, the next group is our group of deans of students who are just a fabulous group of people. So they will introduce themselves. Uh, Antonio, Mr. Antonio, and I am the dean in the Phoenix Center. My name is Jordan Kula, and I'm the Dean of Students in the Interior Student Support Center. Hi, I'm Amy Schoenaker, and I'm your Dean of Students in the Capella Center. Welcome. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm a Dean. I don't have a specific center I'm tied to. I kind of work with all the centers to uh, work on problems and processing together. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a nice little list here for y'all, but I'm not going to use that. So first and foremost, uh, once again, I want to welcome you all here tonight. And uh, one of the things that I would like to talk about is just like our approach to working with you all freshman year, a restorative approach. For me, basically what that means is that our goal is to build community, number one, making sure you belong here. And the reason for that is that we know sometimes coming in, 
eighth to ninth grade, sometimes you make some choices and some decisions that may not be the best choice in that moment. And our goal is to help you work through those moments without um, making you feel unsafe and making you feel like you don't belong in this community. And our work that we want to do is working that we want to do with you and not to you. And it's important for us to be able to do that. But in order for us to do that, we have to make sure that, first of all, you all know that you are part of this community that we have here. And it's going to take some relationship building, which we all love to do. So when you see us in the hallway, we will usually um, always ask you how you're doing, maybe ask you where you're going, maybe ask you what was your morning like or afternoon, what you did yesterday, and what class you, you're going to next, and ask you something about that teacher. So we're going to always find ways to build with you. And go back to what I said before, because the main goal is that we want you to understand that we are here to support you in all the ways that we feel will help you get to the next stages of um, your high school career. Starting out as a freshman can be pretty tough. It will be tough. But we trust that you have the ability to get through that. And as a collective unit, our goal is to help you through that. So senior year come around, we can see that growth. We can appreciate it. Parents can appreciate it. And as a community, we can make sure that we all work together to kind of help get you there. So for me, that's our restorative approach with you and welcome. Um, next, I'm going to talk about our attendance policy, um, a little less fun than what Antonio was talking to you about. Um, but we do believe, you know, it is a lifelong skill for people to be able to show up on time to places. So it is a quality um, that we really focus on here at the high school. Um, we do have supportive plans in place to ensure that the importance of being in class on time. Um, this does include advisory which is a class for credit. So parents, when your child tells you that advisory is not <laughs> required, it absolutely is. And that is one that they still need to be on time to. Um, our TARDI policy emphasizes the importance of being prompt to class. So students who um, get five or more TARDIs or miss five or more blocks in a week will spend a day in our alternate learning environment um, where they will work on their missing assignments in a supervised location. Um, this is so that students, um, student support center staff, um, support staff, whether that's a, a para or a student advocate, teachers, administrators, um, we all can come and check in on the student um, to do a quick check-in to also um, problem solve around what their needs are and what the barriers are to um, getting to class on time so that we can work with the student and the family to really prioritize um, being on time. Another piece is that hall passes are required to communicate that students have a purpose to be out of class. Um, this does help our building security and our student advocate members um, knowing, that, uh, knowing that there is a student out of class with permission and it helps keep our building safe um, as well as helps us identify the students who might need additional support or interventions around attendance. Um, this is um, something in the past that has happened, is if students are repeatedly choosing to be out of class um, without permission or in areas where they shouldn't be, whether that's hiding in bathrooms or wandering the hallways. Um, and we have been really doing all we can to support the student and the family. Um, our SRO has in the past written tickets for loitering, um, which is something that we hope we never have to get to that point, but it is something that has had to happen um, in the past. And we are hoping that we can do everything we can to proactively encourage students um, to attend class and be on time. I'm covering the code of conduct. We follow the code of conduct that is here for the entire district. You're welcome to use the QR code to take a look at the code of conduct. We'll be talking with students about the code of conduct a variety of times, a multitude of different ways throughout the year, but it is still possible that students will make a poor choice and that there will be a school consequence issued for poor choices. Um, we definitely, as Mr. Antonio said, will work um, with as much of a restorative lens as possible to make sure that our school consequence aligns with what we have um, seen as an infraction of the code of conduct. 
Um, and we're definitely, as Mr. Antonio said, trying to help prepare you for your next movement into adulthood and into the community. And so we're trying to help you make better choices and follow the rules as you move along. Uh, the next thing we're going to cover is building safety and security. I know that um, as students in the building, as parents sending your kids to school, you want to make sure that your kid is safe at school. And we do that in a lot of different ways. Um, we re review all of our safety policies every year, the beginning of the year, in every single class through part of the Cardinal kickoff. Um, we also have several different like checks in place to make sure the right people are at the right place in our building. So in order to come into the building, you need to have a student ID. Uh, most of you got your IDs when you had pictures yesterday or today in the afternoon. There's more IDs, more pictures if you didn't get those yet next week, Tuesday in the afternoon. Um, you won't need it for the first couple days because we're going to print them for several people, but that's something that you'll need to have when you come into the building. You show your ID, make sure we know our students are here and people that aren't our students are not here. Um, we drill safety. We have our you know required evacuation drills and things like that that we do every week or every month. Sorry, not every week. Um, we also have some really cool technology in this building. We have a newer building, and that gives us some really cool stuff. We have, cam we have over 300 cameras in our building. We have doors that close in four seconds if any emergencies that happen. All kinds of really neat things that happen in our school that we had the opportunity to build that help keep students and staff safe here. Um, the main thing, though, for safety is that all know that we're all in it together. It requires all of us to make sure the building is safe. So we have some really cool programs to do that. One of them is the SUSO, or Speak Up, Speak Out program. If you've been around uh, the district for a while, other schools also use that. It's tagged right on the front page of every school website in Middleton Cross Plains. Um, if you see something at school you don't like, pop it right in there. We'll take care of it. Or find one of us in the building. We're all happy to help. We're all over the place. Um, all the time. I'm hardly ever in my office. So come, come find us. Um, we're happy to help you. But if you see something you don't like, say something about it. Let us know. We want to hear it. A bunch of you know that we're here to help you and keep you safe. Um, echoing what Mr. Johnson said in regards to safety, it's important that we keep everyone safe as we enter and exit the building. I'm looking at my notes for this because this is some changes that we had from last year. This is especially important at high traffic times around our building and before and after school. So the student entrance is door 32, which is over by the stadium, and it opens at 8 a.m. Students, as already was mentioned, must show their ID to enter the building. The south side of the school, which is near Bristol Street and Middleton Street, is reserved for the bus drop-off only. Drop-off and pick-up, excuse me. During high traffic times, personal vehicles cannot be in that area. Door 23, which we formerly called the north entrance, is no longer an active entrance here for Middleton High School. Um, a difference that we have here at the high school versus um, some of the um, elementary and middle schools here in the district is that midday appointments, our um, attendance line takes care of those absences, and we do not make PA announcements to call the students down for those appointments. So we need to make sure that they have the information um, about when their appointment is so that they can meet you down at whatever entrance you're picking them up at. Okay, um, so if you need to excuse your student's attendance for any reason, whether it's illness or they have an appointment, um, you can do this in one of two ways. You can either call the attendance line for your student's um, student support center and leave a voicemail. Um, please note that these voicemails are processed throughout the entire day. Um, so we do sometimes get follow-up phone calls of, you know, I, I called this morning and the attendance hasn't been corrected in an infinite campus yet um, towards the end of the day and just know that our admin assistants are working really hard to get through all of those um, throughout the day and they, they will get to it and correct attendance. Um, so that is one way that you are able to um, excuse your student's attendance or you can put in an online request through infinite campus as well. Um, you are going to hear shortly about some of our um, cell phone policies that are new this year. Um, and one piece that I want to point out is um, that this will require you to plan ahead with your student of um, like what time and where to pick up as your student won't have their phones out um, when they are in class. So that is something that they need to be aware of, of what time and, and where to meet you. Yeah. 
And uh, once again, really quick, um, if you recall two things from previous words, Ms. Uh, Jordan did a really good job of covering past this a little bit when we talked about um, our attendance policy. Then if you go back to when I spoke, I said, hey, when we see you all in the hallway, we will always ask you questions. But what I left out on purpose was, when we do see you in the hallway, we would love to make sure we see you with one of those passes. Truly, we should never see you in the hallway without a pass when, it, when, it is, um, when it's class time. Passing time is the only time we want you all moving kind of through the hallways. But once you get to the class, whenever you leave your class, you have to have a destinations pass. That's usually like a harder kind of plastic pass. Um, is that right? No. Other way around, I'm sorry. Paper a paper pass is a destination pass. That's you're going from one destination to the next, and we kind of know that. Um, the hard pass, ideally, is I would say out and back pass, which is up there. Um, so it's like restroom and back. But the most important thing is there's one person to a pass, one student to a pass. And sometimes, as educators in the classroom, teachers, they're busy taking care of their business. And if they let you go, to the restroom or go visit another teacher, make sure it's just you and not a, you take a couple of your friends with you. Because if we see you in the hallway and it's three students on one pass, three students on the pass, so how many students gonna get talked to differently? <laughs> Two. All right, so no, truly, one student to a pass, and once again, just remember that, it'll really be super helpful, and it'll be really helpful to always continue to um, just let your teacher know also that it's only you going and don't take a friend with you. I get the joy of talking about cell phones. Um, we had a really awesome team this last year made up of teachers and community members for figuring out, you know, what is, what's the deal with cell phones, right? Are they, they have really good benefits for students? There are things that are detrimental with students. What does the research tell us about how we can be most effective in supporting our kids with phones? Um, we looked at research and found that cell phones do negatively impact student academic outcomes. And social media use is highly likely to influence mental health and social development. We talk about wanting school to feel like a community. It's hard to feel like a community if you're in classroom staring at a rectangle all day, right? You gotta talk to your peers, you gotta engage with people around you. Because of these research, find, research findings, we found it's, it's kind of our responsibility as a school, but also our responsibility together to make sure that we can give our students every opportunity to succeed in the future. So. Here are the details, the cell phone plan. Cell phones are allowed in the building, but not allowed in any academic space, not during classes. A cell phone being used during class will need to be turned into the office for the rest of the day. And when you come to school the next day, have to turn it in again when you get to the building for at least two days for the first offense. So it's not just one day without a phone, it's multiple days without your phone, because we want to make sure you can engage with people around you and with the academic content. We know parents, this is going to be tricky, right? Text my kid, you know, hey, I'll pick up after school, make sure you're at door 38, right? That's tricky. Making sure you can use phones to do that, just don't expect a response from your student in the middle of class. They, they can still use their phones during passing time and during lunch. Those are times to be connection points for them. Or you can always use the school email. They have their school issued devices they can use to contact you during the day. If their phone gets taken away, you will receive an email about that, so you'll know right away that their phone's in the office, and you can come pick it up if you'd like. But that's kind of our, our current plan for cell phones. We're gonna work on some more things with teachers and how to do this really effectively with staff and with students, but know that our goal is not to be punitive in this. Our goal is to make sure that we all can work together because our goal of high school is to get to that graduation point and to be proud of what you did to get there. And I think this is one of the ways we can do that together. And I'll be answering questions after. I'm sure you have plenty of questions. <laughs> Hi, I'm Liz Merrick. I am the AP of Student Services here. So I work with the Special Education Department and Student Services, which is all three of those centers put together. I'm gonna go over just some of the basics so that we can all get used to the lingo of what your kids are gonna be coming home and saying so that we're all kind of on the same page. We run on an AB block schedule. So we have a calendar that's published, um, and I'm, you probably have had this in middle school as well, is it an A day, is it a B day? Um, the differences between our A day and B day, A day is a straight academic blocks. One, two, three, four. In the middle of the day, we have advisory and lunch. So that's an A day. 
The B day has blocks five, six. We then go to advisory or lunch, and then we go to block seven, and then we hit something called ASR1 and ASR2. So this is our daily schedule. It's posted online. We have it around the building, um, but this is kind of the flow of the day. ASR is the bottom of that B day, ASR1, ASR2, and it's two 45-minute blocks. And so in your advisory, which Mr. Reinhardt's going to talk about in just a minute, you sign up for all school resource. During ASR, every single teacher in the building has basically an open study in their classroom. So if you are going to Algebra 1 and you have gotten lost, you have no idea what's happening in Algebra 1 anymore, and you come home and your parents are saying, how's math going? And you're like, it's fine. Uh, and it's not fine, then you need to sign up to go see your math teacher during ASR. Because then you can go in and sit down with the teacher and go, I don't know what's going on anymore, and they can help you get back on track. Um, sometimes the biology teacher might say, honey, you don't know what's going on anymore, so I'm going to request you to come to my room. Um, if a student has to make up a test, if they feel like this student might need to do a little bit more on this standard, that they don't really feel like they have enough evidence to see that they really understand it, they will put in the um, program that we use to sign up for ASR saying, you need to come see me during ASR. The, schedule, the scheduler that we use is something called FlexiSketch. Um, so the kids might say, well, I have to go to FlexiSketch and sign up for ASR. If your student is coming home going, I don't know what to do about this, I just don't know what to do, your first question are, have you gone to ASR? Have you gone to ASR? Because that's where they're going to be able to make those really small group connections and get that individualized attention that they might need for a certain course. If you feel like, uh, there is something going on with my kid and I don't really know and I'm getting that spidey sense as a parent and you've tried to talk to them, um, you can always reach out to our student services department. That's again those three centers. They all have three counselors, a psych, and a social worker. Um, you can call the main line and we, you can just say, I need to talk to someone in Phoenix. Um, and they'll get you to someone who can process through what's going on and kind of help you through and help maybe make a plan for what your student might need. So even if you're unsure, especially if you're a new parent to high school, um, I have a junior this year, so those first couple of months, you're just really unsure, and even as a sophomore, I'm still like, what is happening? Um, always reach out. Um, we do this all the time. We help hundreds of families every year kind of usher students through this process of change and independence, and how much do I need to be hovering? How much do I need to be pulling away? We can have those conversations with you, and we're happy to do so. If your student's coming home and saying something like, oh, this teacher is, I don't know what to do, and I don't understand, and I've gone to ASR, and um, there is going to come a point where you might have to help your student say, well, can you go talk to the teacher? Can you self-advocate? Um, if they can't, you might need to step in and say, okay, I'm going to email the teacher and say, this is what my student is saying. What, what can you tell me? Can we meet? Can we set up a Zoom? Can we talk about what's going on? If for some reason... Um, that's not working out and you've tried it with the teacher and you, you still don't understand something that's happening, you can reach out to an associate principal and we can help facilitate that resolution of whatever is happening. So it might feel like you're alone sometimes when you're sitting there with a 14 year old who's saying it's fine, it's fine. Um, but we're here to help you as well. So just let us know what you might need. And Mr. Reinhardt's going to talk about advisory. All right, you've heard our advisory program mentioned a couple times throughout the presentation. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about what our advisory program um, entails. So our program goals for advisory are to support students as they establish and maintain positive interpersonal relationships with staff and peers. You've heard a lot of us talk about sense of belonging or making sure that students feel like they belong here at the high school. Um, advisory is a, a place where we really dig into that work and, and make sure that they have kind of a home base on a, on a daily um, routine where they can check in and, and know the people that they're going to be with um, and feel comfortable in that group. The second goal is to instill an atmosphere that fosters intellectual, academic, and social emotional growth. Um, so throughout our curriculum within our advisory program, um, we have each day that, that coincides with a theme. 
Um, and some of that work that you'll do is, is around academic and career planning. Um, we will do things like um, having, we, we like to have a lot of fun in advisory. Uh, one of the cool things about freshman advisory is during our homecoming week, we do um, what we call our freshman tailgate. So it's a time for the freshman class and their advisories to really plan kind of their first um, party together and, and do it during our, our homecoming week where we spend time together um, having fun and doing different activities. The third goal um, for advisory is to provide students with opportunities to establish workable goals that will positively impact their high school experience and post-secondary life. Um, so as we progress freshman through senior year, um, the content in advisory changes. Um, so freshman year, it, it, it really is getting yourself accustomed to what a high schooler does and, and how we kind of operate here at the high school. And then as we move up in the grades, we start thinking about, okay, what's coming after high school? What goals am I setting for myself and how do I um, operate within the high school to attain those goals um, so I can be successful with whatever comes after advisory? Advisory runs for, for all four years. Um, so our goal is that whoever you have currently on your advisory schedule, um, you'll be with that advisor and that group of students for all four years of high school. Um, I've been lucky to be connected to an advisory. Now this is my fourth year, so I'll have seniors this year. Um, and I've been with them since their freshman year. And it's just been a really unique way to get to know um, that group of students in a really meaningful way um, and understand kind of what they go through as they, as they navigate the high school. Um, so our, our hope is that students get connected to those people um, in their advisory um, and have kind of a sense of trust and, and again, that, that home base that they can go to um, when things come up for them. Just a quick summary, the difference between advisory and ASR. I know that um, comes up every once in a while. So advisory is in the middle of the day. It's opposite of a student's lunch. Um, so freshmen, remind me, freshmen have advisory or lunch first? Lunch first. Okay, so freshmen eat lunch first, and we do that intentionally um, to have the freshman class eat together um, so we can really hone in on those expectations and, and really set things up for success, and then they'll go to advisory after lunch. Um, again, attendance is required. Um, it is important to reiterate that because one of the first things that students will try to get to a point of advisory isn't required, it is, as well as ASR. Um, we do earn credit for advisory, so 0.25 credits per year um, for advisory. Um, and seniors have some privileges. Freshmen, you don't have to worry about those yet. You have a little bit of time until we get to that, um, but they will have privileges as they get to their senior year. Um, ASR, like Ms. Merrick said, um, only on B-Days. Um, during advisory, we sign up for ASR, um, really to get the assistance that you need in whatever content area um, you need assistance with. Um, we have, uh, going back to what Peg said earlier on, we, we try to take um, this big school and make it feel small. Um, one way we do that for our freshmen is the first day of school. So we have ninth grade only orientation. Um, the picture that Peg showed of herself with all the students in the background, that was our first day with freshmen last year. Um, so we all start the day in the gymnasium, um, bring a lot of energy with our link crew leaders um, who are connected to our advisory program, um, upperclassmen who kind of serve as mentors um, for our freshman advisors. Um, and again, reiterating that one adult for four years and that connection point, um, really honing in on that sense of belonging. Next up, I get to introduce our Assistant Athletic Director and Activities Director, Brad Crandall. Um, and I, I've been told that he's gonna bring some energy and there might be I'm prizes fine. involved. I'm so let's, let's stay tuned. I'm gonna go on the go here. I like to carry my mic if that's going. Okay. How's, how's everyone doing tonight? We're almost done, I promise. Um, welcome, ninth graders. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are at the best school in the state. And I know that, yeah, clap, clap that up. I know that because I get to work with a lot of students both in the classroom and outside the classroom in athletics and activities, and we offer the most of both in the state of Wisconsin. So get ready, here we go. We're gonna start though, we're gonna give some stuff away. So freshmen, ninth graders, if you know the answer to these, raise your hand and I'll come to you and if you get one of these tickets after we're done here tonight, you'll come out to the South Commons and I've got free Middleton swag to give away of your choosing. So you can start your first day of school wearing some fresh Middleton swag. Miss Cool is all about it. Look at that. All right, so the first question, true or false? You're going a little blind here. Students do not need their school ID to go to a, a sporting event. Ooh, right here in the front row. Is it true or false? Oh, hold on though. First, say your name. 
My name is Max Tyler, and it's false. Max, that is correct. That is false. Take a card, see me afterwards. It is false. Next slide. Here are some of our expectations for our events. We host everything. <laughs> we host everything, and we love it. Mr. Sims and I work together. Um, I should have said that together. Well, Mr. Sims is at our Hall of Fame meeting right now. Uh, we are double booked. We're one half of our office. We also have two admin assistants. Um, before I get into this, our office is right over there. It's on the north end of the, uh, the school. Um, every student should know where we are because we like to have fun. It's where a lot of the fundraisers are held. It's where we give stuff away. We love having students in our office. It's a good time. So expectations. When we're at events, you come to events to be at the events. You're not leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back. So parents, you know once your kids are there, they're there. If they leave, they got to go home. That's just a, a basic entry. We don't accept backpacks in our events. So please do not come with backpacks. Um, that's a safety concern that we don't want to have to deal with. Um, we will offer at football games a place for kids to leave their backpacks, but they can only pick them up at the end of the night. So we'll explain all that uh, as we get closer to games. And then this year, something new. We are cashless for entry. We use a service called GoFan to, to have all of our tickets. You can buy them all online ahead of time. They're already on there. Um, we sell student passes. We sell adult passes. We sell single game tickets. We are going cashless as a department. We are the last Big 8 school to do so. So concessions are still cash, but tickets are cashless. When we're there, students, you are not middle schoolers anymore. Get involved. Get into the student section. Listen to the studio leaders. We have fantastic student section leaders this year. I am so excited to work with them. We're meeting with them next week. They will lead you in all the chants. They'll keep you in the games. They go to every single event to lead the student section. So don't just go to football. Don't just go to volleyball. Go to all of them. It's a great time. And then the last thing is we, we really cheer on our team. We're not about putting other teams down. We are a very successful athletic program. But we're more concerned with being significant and doing the right thing. We will win because we have good coaches and we have great students. I said that earlier. But we are about doing the right thing. So we are going to make sure when we're in the stands, it's never putting the other team down. It's only picking our team up. That is our motto. And if it's not going that way, we will take the kids out of the stands and, and teach them how to do it right. That's our job. I think it's time for another one. All right, so what app or website do we use to do our tickets? Who's got it? I'm going to go to the back this time. Let's, uh, right here. Oh, right here. Here we go. I'm going to come across. Come on down. Come on down. What's your name? No? Okay. It's okay. You good? Anyone else? Uh, back here. Right here. What's your name? Caitlin. Caitlin. Caitlin, what do we use for our tickets? GoFan is correct. There you go. Nice job. Number two. Bobby, hit it. All right. You can take a look here. We offer 34 varsity programs, 75 teams within those 34 programs. We offer 95 clubs. That's everything from book club to DECA to German language club to HOSA. You name it, we've probably got it. And if we don't, every year we have two application cycles where students can design clubs and see if they get approved. We have 95 opportunities for your student to belong, and we have 34 athletic opportunities for your student to belong. That's a huge thing for our school, and we love it. So let's go to the next slide. We did this quick. Let's see if we had, we had some state championships last year. We had six of them. If you can name one of them, I'll give you a free ticket. Ooh, right here, right in the middle. Middle back, give me one. First name, come on up. Uh, J.D. Turner. J.D. Turner. Uh, Ultimate Frisbee. Ultimate Frisbee wins. There you go. <laughs> Ultimate Frisbee boys won their first state title last year, beating Madison West, who was the 12-time reigning champ. That's amazing. We also won in boys soccer, girls swimming, boys swimming, boys volleyball, and the first ever WIAA boys lacrosse state championship was last year. So we had six total state championships. Let's hear it for those students. Like I said, we're really impressed with success and we're very really happy for that, but we're more important to us is the significance our coaches and athletes play in our community. That's our goal. That is our number one goal. So now, students, take note of this. Tuesday, 9-10, second week of school, during your ASR period, which is on B days, we will offer an activities fair where all of our clubs get in the gyms and they have displays and information for you to learn what you're interested in. And you can join the clubs, you can register for the clubs, and you can do all of that. And it's a great opportunity to meet upperclassmen that have been in, in your shoes. They've been where you are, and they have advice. And this is a great opportunity to connect with them. So let's get another question. All right, 
How many student activities do we normally have? Oh, I'm going way in the back. Here we go. Give me a second. I'm slow. This might be cheating. I think we talked yesterday. <laughs> My name's Rihanna Jane, and it's D95. It is 95. There you go. Come on back. We got one more question. Look at this. Homecoming. Homecoming is the best time in high school, without a doubt. And we do it up here in Middleton. We love homecoming, right, Ms. Shoemaker? We love homecoming. So we have lots of stuff going on. It is the week of uh, 1014, which, hey, students, homecoming week this year, only four days of school because that's a PD day. So you don't have school that Monday. But there's lots to do. And Mr. Reinhardt talked about a little bit about it. Um, we've got spirit night, the parade, the freshman picnic. We've got the football game on Friday night. We've got our first adapted sports league game that week on Thursday. We've got one act play that Thursday, part of homecoming week. And then Saturday from seven to 10 in the field house is our homecoming dance, which all students are invited to. Um, there's a small fee for it. There'll be lots of publications about it. The theme will get picked in the next couple weeks so you can start planning your, your, your everything. But we love homecoming and we love including our ninth graders. Last year we had 1,749 students come to our homecoming dance. I looked that up before I got here, so I don't just remember it. We're gonna beat it this year. We've got 2,400 students in the building. We'd like to see 2,400 students at homecoming. That's what we want. So let's get to our last question. Name three events that freshmen can or need to be part of during homecoming week. Oh, you aren't paying attention. <laughs> Wait, where? Oh, right here, I'm coming. Here we go. I'm gonna sneak through here if that's okay. I'm getting, I'm getting tired. All right, say your name. I'm Taruni and it is uh, Freshman Talikid. That's one, give me two more. Two more. Da dance, homecoming dance. Yeah. <laughs> and also a parade. Yes, there you go. Come see us afterwards. <laughs> Everyone, I can't, I can't speak enough how, how proud we are to help your students do what they do in this building and outside this building and give them opportunities. I'm extremely proud to be in the position I'm in. I look forward to working with all of your students. Mr. Sims also does, our whole department does. And if you ever need us, again, we're on the north side, right by the lunchroom. Come by and see us anytime. See us at an event, we'd love to talk. Thank you. Mr. Crandall, are you out of breath? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I did honestly ask him this morning if he could conduct a cheer, and he came up with trivia instead. So I think that I think that was great. All right, we have just uh, this again wealth of services, including our student services coordinators, and that's Miss Nicole Morehouse and Miss Becky Poles. They are here, um, and if you have questions for them after, I'll, I'll show you where uh, you can head for that. We also have our nursing team that's not here. We have two nurses. We have a beautiful nursing um, station, um, brand new, that is really, really private and really supportive. We have a, an SRO. We have a female um, SRO, which is a great modeling for our students. We have um, SAFE. I know if you came from Glacier and Cromery, I believe you had student and family advocates there. We have uh, Ms. Laura uh, Taveras Genoa and Ms. Aisha Myers. Um, they are very involved on, in our Latin, uh, Latino Student Union and our Black Student Union. Also, if you want to um, engage your student in um, banking, we have a bank here. Um, we've got um, a bank that is located, you'll see that, um, your student will actually see that on their tour, is near our school store, so if they want to deposit money or take money out and they have a, a credit, UW credit union account, um, they can do that. Um, it is, um, housed, uh, or excuse me, su supported through UW Credit Union, and um, we actually have student interns that actually are working uh, at the bank. Whew, we've got some big events coming up, so you all know that on August 29th, it's the first day of school. That's a regular bus schedule. Um, and then on September 11th, Make sure you wear your tennis shoes if you can come to school because actually what you will do is you will walk your student's schedule. 
which could mean that you're back and forth, back and forth. And, um, and that's just sort of how it is um, at, at our school. Um, we students have eight minute passing time because it, if you are on the north side and the third floor and need to come to the first floor on the south side, it can take some time. And so lots of people, again, will be out to help students during that time. Also, again, you've heard about homecoming week. And then I wanted to share something with you. Um, in, I don't know if you've read any of the research. Um, there was a 45-page article in The Atlantic. But this, art, this book is called The Anxious Generation, um, how the great rewiring of childhood is causing an epidemic of mental health. I um, am going to be conducting a book study for anyone who's interested. Um, you can purchase the book. If you have financial needs, I can certainly purchase it for you. And we, in, um, in September, uh, excuse me, October and November, we will run the book club from 7 to 8.15. It will be on Zoom. It is a phenomenal book, really written for parents. If that is something that you are pondering, you're thinking about um, how does, how, do, how can I manage um, in this sort of cell phone generation that we're in when the addiction rates are at staggering amounts. The, um, our cell phone plan, to be perfectly honest, is really a phase one plan for this year. I foresee a time that cell phones will not be allowed in schools. And you're already seeing that in districts um, and in states um, across the nation. The, um, the addiction issues that come from cell phones are phenomenal, um, the, as well, of course, as the mental health. And so this I foresee as a phase one of a cell phone plan um, that we're beginning this year. So thank you for your support in that. So we're about to head out for our meet and greet. Um, this is optional. Um, you are going to go, as you leave the building, you're going to go south. And in the south, we have um, a table that has all of the principals on it. We have the dean of students. We have athletics. And we have special education all set up. You'll see the big signs. We also have cookies and lemonade in our maker space. Um, so thank you so much for being here tonight. And I look forward to partnering with you this year. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>